All right, this morning we're going to learn how to group and count a range. And let's suppose we have a, a set of data. And in this example, we'll pretend that we have data that's kind of like a scale, where you have 1 to 5, where we have 1 to 5, I mean. So it's kind of like we ask people um, on a scale of 1 to 5, how would you rate today's service, rank today's service? And uh, people would say 1 to 5, 1 being bad, 5 being good. Now let's suppose that we wanted to put these into a range and then count how what the results are in the range. Now generally speaking, when you have a scale of 1 to 5, you'll know that the, the bottom two are not so good, the middle one is kind of not really anything, and then the upper two are considered to be good. There are exceptions to the rule. I've actually worked at a company where if it wasn't a five, everything was considered bad. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to use a case win statement. And we're going to look at when results are between one and two, then poor. When the results equal 3, then, and that's a hard word to choose, I'll just do indifferent, and when the results are between 4 and 5, then good. And then I'm going to do end as result range. And I'm going to select that from the table. And by the way, as a note, when I, when I complete this, there are several other ways in which you can do this. Um, one way that I've also seen is people will use a uh, subquery. But if you're good at uh, building common table expressions, a lot easier to do. It just depends. So count star from R and then we're going to group by result range. And so what it's going to do is it's going to throw um, these categories but it's going to create something new with these categories. So we're now if anything is between 1 and 2 it's not going to have a category of 4, 3 it's going to be indifferent, 4 and 5 it's going to be good. And then it's going to count how many are in, in each of those categories. And again, we can go ahead and, you know, we can check the work just to make sure that we're getting something correct. And what I always like to do is pick, uh, let's see, good is 4 and 5. So it's kind of the middle value. So we can sit there and see how many 4 and 5s do we have uh, in the table. Oops, wrong table. And... We have a 4 there, we have a 4 and a 5, and then we have a 5. So yeah, there are 4. Okay. So what you'll do if you have to put a range and then count that range, uh, it's very useful to use a case win statement, and then of course count star, and then you're going to group by. As a case, one quick point on case win, and I believe I covered this in the case win videos, make sure that your case wins are readable, uh, not just for yourself, but for others as well. Um, don't I mean people can you can sit there and throw out a case win kind of like this and then like this and then like this and I've, I've seen people do this before and again that that works but um, just as a case in point the thing is is <laughs> and I've seen them go just you know continuous and continuous but it really makes it difficult so a good place to do your breaks on case wins is every time you have a win and then just tab in and that's why when people will sit there and say oh well the, the controversy a lot that you hear in programming is you need to you know notate your code put notes or put comments in your code and it's like well th this code right here is very readable and if your code's very readable you don't need as many comments as code that's very unreadable <laughs> 